what's great about being here on the Isles of Scilly is that I can actually experience some of the places that were really special to Bronze Age people. They're still very visible in the landscape and you can actually go inside them. I myself have found a couple of Bronze Age objects. I found a Bronze Age chisel terminal and I was so excited to find it because, well, just the thought that people have been roaming about and making tools and working and living on that land where I'm protecting for three or three and a half to four thousand years ago it's really sort of quite blows my mind actually so here is some information about where we are Halangi down this is what it used to look like a series of roundhouses and people lived here for around about a thousand years from the iron age through to the early medieval period it's all built of this cornish granite it's very, very hard rock. And up here, it's the main complex of little buildings. Let's head up. Obviously, I've got my eyes on any rabbit hole. Because imagine if there was something sticking out that I missed. I don't even care that there's rabbit poo in here. house. I think this one is the most recent. It says it was built in 200 AD. So that is actually a Roman house. Look. Beautifully built. From the view from here. Well obviously it wouldn't have had these boats whizzing across the bay. In fact, it would have looked quite different. About 10,000 years ago, this vista would almost certainly have been mostly land. The sea levels here, as in many parts of Britain, have risen significantly. And so there was probably a channel of water in between what are now separate islands. This one has its original fire pit. Imagine all the food that was cooked here seabirds, fish, crabs, shellfish, loads of plants and seaweed to forage and obviously land which is fertile that can be farmed as well. I know that this particular site was excavated in the 70s so I bet at that time there probably weren't any rules about metal detecting. I bet they had metal detectors up here. I know that lots of artefacts were found, just an amazing sword and um, mirror that was found in a potato field. The farmer was just out in his field one day and put his foot through a kind of chamber and it turned out to be a tomb of a very, very special woman who was buried with a sword and, uh, and a mirror. There also loads of Roman artifacts, brooches and coins and bits of glass. I'm sure there'll be stuff sitting right underneath me as I'm sitting here. <laughs> if we could just bring the detector, but we can't. It's strictly forbidden here. I am limited to eyes only while I'm here. I'm going to use them the best I can. <laughs> this is quite unique to this island and this area. I think this is the best example of this type of burial chamber in Britain. It was a communal tomb. It's much older than the village it dates from the Bronze Age, so it dates from somewhere around 2500 BC up to 800 BC. Look at these capstones, they are just absolutely mammoth. This was already ancient when Iron Age people were living just below us in that village. It's already almost 2000 years old. these stones. I don't 
real sense of shelter inside. These capstones, as all of these capstones, were lifted back into position by the archaeologist that looked at this place in 1900 and they weigh 11 tons and six slightly hanging out in the in between the gap between <laughs> between them they look pretty safe hopefully they found the remains of four human beings in here and so we know that this was used as a chambered burial also remains of bronze age pottery were found in here the very fact that the iron age people that lived here afterwards didn't damage this and use the stone for their own buildings shows that it was obviously respected by subsequent people living here. It's an amazing space and even it, actually even the acoustic in here is quite interesting. You can't hear the sea at all. Studies that have been done on those chambers show that the acoustic behaves really in a really interesting way inside. And you get this phenomenon called standing waves. When you're making sound, whether through drums or using um, voices, the sound waves cancel each other out in some places and are amplified in others and that's the effect of the, the waves bouncing off the stones where you're making the sound you don't hear the sound you hear it somewhere else but it must have felt like sounds were coming from other worlds this here is the lower grave and look at some of the pot that were found in the chamber two that sits absolutely bang opposite. This one isn't as in good condition as the one above, but you can still see that it has two capstones. But you can see where it points is directly in between those two white sandy beaches. And what is there there's another burial chamber and in that one there were found 60 human bodies or remains of 60 human bodies. That's called Naki Boy Khan and it's over on the other island over there called St Martin's. Let's go inside. Once again that sense of quiet acoustic. This is quite very very relaxing in here I can hear the waves and I can literally see as I look through here two beaches framing Naki Boy Khan which is the other burial chamber the two are communicating to each other visually chamber now up ahead it's a circular brass mound surrounded by a stone curb and inside it there's a rectangular chamber Pretty incredible, isn't it? Slightly claustrophobic because of these massive stones above me, but I hope they're resting well on something. Back into sunlight and life. Here I am on Tresco now, a different island, and looking out over Briar, and behind me is Samson.
Tresco is another island absolutely packed with prehistoric and military history. So we're gonna go exploring about. Right behind me, you can actually see a burial cairn. They're Bronze Age and Neolithic burial cairns. So really, really ancient. I figure that if there were Neolithic and Bronze Age people here, then there must be tools kicking around here. Whether they're made of flint, whether they're made of bronze, ceremonial things, who knows? I can't use a metal detector, but I can use my eyes. I've never had any luck at this before. The tide's coming in and I figure this would be a good place to look because it's below the Bronze Age burial cairns. So I'm just chancing my luck really. So I'm looking amongst all these granite rocks and I know that this shoreline is much higher than it used to be. It used to be out there. And so this was once Farmland. Just looking at these eroded bits of cliff and thinking about something I read that said that every 500 years, I think an inch of soil is laid. I reckon that it said something like every 500 years, five centimetres of soil is laid down. About that much. 2,000 years, 3,000 years, 4,000 years. So we're looking around here where this dark colour meets the lighter colour. That is Bronze Age kind of territory. So I'm thinking I just walk along here and have a look. I'm just scanning the whole thing and the floor at the same time <laughs> in the hope that I might find some sign be amazing as if there was some pot or something like that that would tell us that people were here. Whoa. <laughs> I nearly fell over but I'm still on two feet. On the other side of the island where there is a Bronze Age settlement and signs of old walls, field systems, there were pieces of pot found in eroded cliffs just like these. As usual, I'm probably rather more optimistic than I should be. Oh, I think I can see a seal. There he is, just underneath the island and to the left of it a little. It's lovely to be somewhere so wild. I did see that there was some pot found on St Martin's, another of the islands here. Some Bronze Age pottery. It was dark in colour, dark grey, and it had beautiful markings on it. It was funerary urns, it was cremation urns. So uh, probably not going to find that kind of thing here because the, the cairns are higher up the hill. In here again. I feel like I want to look on the ground. There's a strange smell in here. It smells kind of like a bit like a wet cellar. You know that smell that's a bit mouldy. I just want to find a flint so bad. I'm looking in all the little crevices to see if there might be one. It's a really windy day and it's my last day here on Tresco. I've just discovered something quite exciting and I'm going, not going to give up till the last minute, but I found out that there was a Bronze Age settlement found here. There have been a number of um, flint blades and waste flakes found on that edge of that coastline 
So I've got a little map. I'm going to head over there now. Not the worst place to be searching for ancient artifacts. This is the beach where apparently a lot of flint flakes and flint blades have been found. So I'm sitting in a little kind of pathway that's been eroded away and I'm going to see if I can find any evidence. I'm not going to root around with my fingers too much because I don't want to damage the, the, the dunes. But I'm just going to look with my eyes and see if I can see anything. So I'm looking in all of these eroded banks. This is where apparently a lot of the flint and flint flakes were found. Flint blades. unless you count just this view. <laughs> I mean, what an amazing place. It's hard to believe I'm in the UK, quite honestly, when I see the sea looking like this. I spend my whole time painting the coast and I've never found anywhere that looks quite like the Isles of Scilly. Um, I've had such a great week exploring all the Neolithic and Bronze Age monuments here. I had hope that I might find um, some evidence of Bronze Age man, maybe I'm being completely over optimistic. I haven't seen another person since I've been down here this morning. It's just it's easy to imagine people, ancient people moving around here and enjoying these views as much as I am. It's absolutely magical. Yes, uh, for now, I'll leave you with this just this view. <laughs> Take care, everyone, and uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe because. I get to go on all these kind of adventures and I'd love to take you with me.